Lighting in Unreal Engine is super fun and super easy. We're going to explore lighting our scene for a daytime environment and also for a nighttime environment. But first, let's go and explore all the different types of lights you have in Unreal Engine very quickly. The first light that we get when we created this blank scene is the sun sky system over here. Now to rotate and change the way the sun is lighting your scene, you want to hold the control key and tap the L key. This is going to bring up the sun sky tool, which is going to allow you to position the sun with your mouse. So remember, I'm still holding control. I've only tapped L once and I'm still holding control. The vertical movement of the mouse sets and rises the sun and the horizontal movement of the mouse changes the direction from which it's lighting your scene. And you can see this is super easy to see results with. If I go into my apartment here, so I'm in the apartment here and I hold control and tap L, I can very quickly move the sun around to get some really nice lighting in my scene. You know, the lumen system just helps you out here. And more about that in a second. But you can see it's very easy to set up this daytime lighting in your scene with the sun kind of shining in here. Some of the other lights, we'll talk about it very quickly. I'm going to search for light here and I'm going to put off the directional light in our scene. So with our scene black, you know, completely dark here, you can go to an unlit shading mode to still see your scene without any lighting being shown. So you can see everything is still there. It's not like we've lost our scene. But with light, with you know, back in the lit mode, we're going to explore all the other different types of light actors you get in Unreal Engine. If you go to the quickly add a project, you'll see that there's a section here for lights and you have the directional light, which is what we just explored. It is a light that is coming from one direction, right? Like this, like our sun light coming from one direction here. The point light, which is next up, is going to be light cast in all directions from one point in 3D space. After this, we have our spotlight, which is a point light with a bit of a conical fall off here. And along with this, we have our rectangular light, which is basically light from a rectangular source, such as a TV or maybe a ceiling light, you know, something like this. Now, all of these lights have a couple of, you know, they have a few unique settings within them, but more or less the settings are the same. We have an intensity slider over here, which is going to control if the, you know, how bright or how dim this light is. We have a light color setting over here, which will allow you to change the color of your light. And we also have the attenuation radius, which means, you know, how, you know, how much does this, how far and does the effect of this light go? So a larger number here will mean that this light affects more things at a distance. So like you can see here, but if I take this down, the light, this light is no longer affecting that wall over there. So you can see this, this is what it does. You leave these settings at default if it's your first time with Unreal or if your first couple of runs with Unreal, you don't have to uh, change these settings or the intensity setting here. At most, you'll need to change the light color if you're looking for a particular colored light, but you can leave these at default. The other interesting thing with lights is you can use temperature. So lower values will lead to warmer lights and higher values will lead to colder lights. You can also use that as well. So in our scene, we're gonna put the directional light back on and as you can see, we've got this pretty nice setup ready to go for our scene here, right? So our scene's got this nice afternoon vibe going with it here. Now the issue we're having in our scene here is that we've got this weird fogging going on here. And this is happening because of exposure. Unreal being a game engine has auto exposure enabled so that when the players enter darker areas, the game kind of gets brighter and when the player enters a lighter area, the you know the uh, exposure adjusts just like our human eyes do. So when we enter darker areas, it's going to take a second and get brighter, as you can see here. And as you go into a lighter area, it's going to get dimmer and then adjust for that. Now, while this may seem great for a game, it is not great for a rendered cinematic, which is what we're, what we're going for over here. So I'm going to go to the place place actors panel over here and search for post process volume. So when you put that in your scene, the way this is meant to be used is when you are, uh, when you enter this, when the player enters this volume, you can then make a range of changes here, such as color grading, and you know maybe the player enters, uh, you know, like a, a region that's up in the mountain, so you can go with a colder, you know, color grading for your scene here. And when the player enters like a desert, sandy area, the color grading is going to change. So just to show you an example of this, if I place this volume out here, and I change the temperature of my scene to a much lower setting here. As soon as I enter this volume, it kind of blends and goes into this 
you know, this cold scene here. So as the player kind of walks into this volume, it's going to get colder. And then the, when the player leaves, it'll get warm, warmer. So these are more for like localized uh, post-processing uh, settings over here. But we don't want that. We want this to affect the entire scene. So you don't have to scale this up and make it very large. You just have to search infinite extent in the settings here and make sure this is on. Now it's going to affect the entire scene wherever it is. So we can reset that, leave it in the middle. Don't worry, it won't be visible because it's just a hollow volume uh, in our scene. So it won't be visible. And now we can go to exposure. And inside exposure, you want to set the metering mode to manual. This is going to remove any sort of auto exposure we have in our scene. With that set to manual, the scene is going to go completely dark here. And we are going to check exposure compensation and a good number to be at, like a good starting point is 11.5. This will give you a good starting point for your scene. Now the issue with 11.5 is that yes, the brighter areas are looking nicer, but we've also lost all the detail in our scene. So it's all looking very dark now. So I'm gonna select my post-process volume and choose a higher number maybe 12, 13, 14, and I think 15 is where we wanna be. So this is a lot nicer. We can see some of those lighter areas and we can also see some of these darker areas. You don't want your scene to be completely lit up or completely dark. You want to have a range between bright values and darker values to create contrast, to make your scene interesting. Like you see, we have the shape we're creating here. We have the shape here. We have some of these darker areas over here. And it's got a good contrast between light and dark. Now, the next thing we're going to take a look at is, all right, our exposure looks somewhat okay. We can see our scene. The illumination from the sun is looking great. What we're going to do now is look at how we can implement these sort of these light rays, these uh, sunlit rays, these God rays coming in from our sunlight over here. So to do that, first, we have to head on over to our fog. So in the exponential height fog, you first want to go and enable volumetric fog. When you enable this, your scene will become slightly darker because now it is evaluating the volumetrics of the scene. Now with that done, next what we're going to do is head on over to our light. So directional light here. And then in your directional light, all the lights have this setting, which is the volumetric scattering intensity. We're going to turn this up to four, which is the maximum value. So maximum volumetric scattering intensity. Now for this to work, we have to head back to our fog and change the density up to 0.1. So you're gonna start seeing these really nice rays coming in because now our fog is dense enough and the direction light is scattering enough. You know, it's scattering at that higher intensity for it to start showing this here. And the great thing about this is you can still press, you know, Control L to move your sun around to get these really nice rays coming in here if that's what you want in your scene, right? So you can pick a point where which looks good to you, which you're happy with, and then you can lock it in there. You have these really nice rays coming in. So with that done, we've taken a look at how you could do some daytime lighting. Yes, you may have noticed that some of these transparent objects here are going to appear slightly strange at a distance, so we can just get rid of them like this. Uh, but yes, with that done, we've got some nice daytime lighting set up. You can raise the exposure if you want, if you feel this is too dark here. Uh, but yeah, that's how you would approach daytime lighting. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how you would light the scene for night. So how would we go and put the direction light off and place some interior lights in our scene to create a nice cozy looking environment.